Boy, hi. Uh, you know, I just published my 12th book. Uh, I'll leave the link in the, in the description. You don't have to buy it, though. Um, and I've, now that I had, can't think of anything more to write about um, for the moment, I have kind of nothing to do. And it occurred to me that there are many things in the world that are left unanswered. And maybe I could pursue solving one of those great mysteries. And uh, being a descendant of King Edward IV of England, uh, through his bastard son, Arthur, the Viscount of Lyle, I thought I should do something for England, and especially for uh, uh, Princess Kate, who's recently completed chemo chemotherapy. Um, so I thought I'll do something for England, and I'll solve the Jack the Ripper murders, one of the most baffling unsolved unsolved string of murders, perhaps in history. Um, but thinking about that, it made me think about true crime as a, as a cultural interest. Um, I was watching an episode of 48 Hours, who always handle stories about murder very tactfully. And you know, I, I, I respect them for that. Uh, this uh, particular video was about the, the Idaho student murders uh, that happened just within the last year or two. Um, and I was noticed in the comments that there were a lot of people who were like, oh yeah, I can't wait for this trial to get underway. Which Who's going to be covering it? Is it court TV? Is, are there going to be cameras allowed? And, and it, goodness gracious, it just, it just reminded me of you know, like a spectator sport, or like people were excited for the playoffs, you know? Um, and I think that's indicative of true crime fandom. I think that's just a pretty much a good way to sum up what true crime fandom looks like to me. It looks like people treating horrific tragedies as spectator sports or as entertainment. Um, I mean, you, you can look at the, the wealth of Ted, Do Ted Bundy documentaries and films that have come out in the last um, five, six, seven years. Um, people have an unhealthy fascination with murder and murderers. And in doing so, in being true crime addicts, and that's how many of these people describe themselves, and being true crime fans... Uh, it's very dehumanizing to the people who died at the hands of these murderers who, who, who we've turned into folk heroes, almost. Um, if all murders stopped, if all serial killing just stopped, I mean, true crime fans would not have a hobby anymore. And when you're hobby is dependent on the continuing uh the continuing acts of violence that uh that stain our our world and i think it's time to look into something like you know model airplane building or uh you know uh studying things studying things like i study things like military history you know things that are a lot more positive to think of you know um, it's just very dehumanizing to the victims. Uh, the victims become afterthoughts and footnotes in the cases. The, it becomes a novelty when you make true crime a fandom and a hobby and a culture, almost, a community. Uh, it reminds me, of, there, there's a song by Alice Cooper, the great Alice Cooper, a song called I Love the Dead. Uh, it's a like many of Alice's songs, it's a surprisingly lovely song, but it's also got that spooky edge to it, you know? Uh, at first listen, you would think, oh, this is a an edgy, tongue-in-cheek song about necrophilia. I don't believe it is. I think it's more about our fascination with death. We have such a fascination with the vile and the gory that it's... Um, that it's, it's almost like we love death. And 
it's, uh, uh, it's, I don't like it. Um, I mean, the only reason we're fascinated with the Titanic is because a lot of people died. If the Titanic had just been a, a freighter carrying, you know, cargo, I don't, I don't think any, anybody would care. I mean, there would be a scientific community who's interested in the, the deterioration of the wreck itself. But the reason we were so fascinated by the Titanic is because a lot of people died. And that's why people are engrossed in true crime. It's unhealthy. It's dehumanizing. And it's a symptom of... It's a symptom of a sick society to engage in a bit of... Maybe that's hyperbole, but it's... Um, you know, call a spade a spade. Uh, but anyway, I, I've got to get to work on catching old le Leather Apron, as he was called. Um, I hope I gave you something to think about. It didn't sound like too much of a jerk. Um, have a blessed day.